the Heron in County Clare and the Fly Shannon stage on the gig rig. The Faraday in his hometown of Ennis is Kieran Hanrahan. Bolognieri, I guess we're good for the Stachwig Chaka Kelly. appreciative audience we have here. You're very welcome to Kelly House, coming to you tonight from the Fly Shannon stage here on the gig rig in Ennis in County Clare. Yeah. I've been waiting 39 years for Flack and the Heron to return to Ennis and the party is definitely on. We have some exciting music and song for you in the next hour or so from some newly crowned all Ireland champions and who knows? champions in the waiting because we start off with most of a band that will be flying the flag for the banner tomorrow in the senior Cayley band competition playing Man of the House, The Pinch of Snuff and St. Ruth's Bush. Would you please welcome T. Nakula, Cayley Band. <laughs> Getting a preview of the All Ireland Senior Cayley Band Champions. I'm not sure just yet. No drummer, Dennis. I believe a slight tweak in the hamstring. You said you wouldn't, uh, you wouldn't chance him tonight, Dennis Liddy. I know. I would save him until better things maybe tomorrow night. We'll see how it goes. Obviously, we're looking forward to that big time. Members of Tina Kula. Oh, good question. Um, Elvie Miller. I better know her. She's on the piano over there. That's my wife. Uh, Eamon Cotter and Marion Curtin on flutes, Liam Flanagan here beside me on the banjo, Derby Kiki beside us on the accordion, 
Francis Cunningham on the concertina, Don the Creedon on fiddle, and Sarah O'Gorman on fiddle. Now, of course, Tina Quilla is not just this Cayley band. There's a lot of activity around Tina Quilla. You had, a, in fact, we weren't sure whether you'd make it for the Cayley House tonight, involved in a group of Kyol competition. Yeah, we went from the, literally the senior group Kyol competition straight over onto the stage in the last five minutes. So we couldn't like, find and all that, but sure, that's the way it goes, and we had been involved there since morning. In fairness, Dennis did say to me, we will be there. I wasn't inclined to believe him until I saw him come across the bridge there, but you are here. A bit of success for the underage groups, though. Yeah, but we uh, got first in the under-15, uh, under-15, keep it cool today. Excellent stuff. Gina Kula, bringing it back home. Um, the band tomorrow, would you not feel that you're kind of chancing things by being out tonight playing? Have they orders now to go straight home after Cayley House? Of course, uh, we wouldn't dream of playing a tune at the flag on a Saturday night. What else would you be doing, Dennis? Just, we're going to go home before dawn. <laughs> <laughs> so you'd get home to change the suits for tomorrow night. I think that's about the only promise you can make. Uh, we wish you well. That's, that's the spirit of this week so far. Is that we've, every one of us, we've been out since last Sunday. We started with the pageant in Cusick Park last Sunday. We had a ball. And then we had a couple of concerts during the week. We were all playing in various venues. So yeah, I'm actually going horse at this point. So it's been a fantastic week so far. And we're looking forward to tonight, obviously, and tomorrow again. Well, certainly, I'll catch up with you tomorrow night at the Senior Kelly Band competition. We'll find out a little bit more about the origins of Tina Kula. You're going to play a selection of jigs for us. What are you going to play? The jigs are the Queen of the Fair and the Carol. I'll step out of your way. Two great old traditional jigs, made famous, I suppose, by Joe Cooley, the Queen of the Fair, and the Carol Row jig from the T. Nakula Cayley Band.
Beautiful music from Tina Quilla. And if you want to hear them at the Cayley Band competition tomorrow night, it's on over in the Dome. But actually, I have a feeling that there's not a ticket left. I'm not sure. Maybe you could check with Glore for that. But, you know, you'll hear them on Cayley House in the coming weeks anyway, as we will be recording the competition. And a reminder that you're listening to Cayley House live from the Fly Shannon stage here on the gig rig in Abbey Street in Ennis, County Clare. Ah, uh, great crowd. I just have a couple of requests actually that were handed to me earlier by Oliver O'Connell. The first one says, can you please play a request for my lovely mum Maureen Armstrong in Upper Church and good luck, good luck to tip footballers and hurlers as if they didn't have enough down there. That's from Marion and friends who are at the FLA. So hope Maureen Armstrong you'll enjoy us up there in Upper Church. Also a very special request for Denny O'Keefe in Gorey in County Wexford. A loyal listener that's from his sister Chrissy and Sonny. And I'm going over here to speak to Ava Short. Am I Ava? Uh, a young woman who's a member of the All-Ireland Under-18 Champion Trio. And they're right with us here tonight in Cayley House. Ava, a little about this trio, flute, concertina and harp. Concertina checking his text at the moment, or is he looking for the names of tunes? I'm not quite sure. But tell us who's in the trio. Uh, Flower Mulligan is here playing the concertina, Fanula Donlin on the harp, and myself on flute. Concertina, where are you from? Uh, we're from Dundalk in Leith. And are you members of a branch of cultists up there? Yeah, the Dundalk branch of cultists. We play in the Oriel Centre, uh, Dundalk Hill. Well, that's in Dundalk Jail. Yeah, it's a beautiful uh, centre there for Irish traditional music. There's no doubt about it. A call the centre. What about the, the, the three of you? How have you always played like since you were kids? Well, we've been playing together as a trio for the last two years, but we've known each other for a fair bit longer than that, from the you know, under-12 group and okay. all that. And you've taken part in competition that I take it previously. Did you win it before? No, we were in it last year, but we didn't place, so... And suddenly this year you're all Ireland champions under 18. Are you happy with that? Oh yeah, we're delighted. Yeah. That's fantastic. What are you going to play by the way? Uh, we're playing two jigs. Uh, oh god, one in uh, Wandering Minstrel. Uh, we don't know the second one. Okay, Wandering Minstrel into the second one. Gone on him, somebody mentioned it earlier, but I know it's not that one for sure. So the Wandering Minstrel selection from Ava Short and Concertfoot. Penula Donlan on the harp and Saren O'Mueligan on the concertina, all Ireland champions since today. Thank you. 
that's just wonderful music and I would say relief on some of the performers there and joy. They can go away now and celebrate their win. That's the All-Ireland champion under-18 trio, Ava Short on the concert flute, Fanula Donlan on the harp and Saren O'Mwelegon on the concertina. And I have another request here actually just to play a special request for Liam Mullins and all the residents at Hillview Nursing Home in Carlow. Liam is a regular, or he was a regular flag war in his younger days, but he doesn't travel now, but he is a regular listener to Cayley House. And I'm told if you play this request, you will make him 20 years younger. That's Liam Mullins. So Liam, we hope you're in good order and enjoying Cayley House from the FLA here in Ennis. That request came from Martin Phelan. And by the way, tomorrow night's rolling wave on RTE Radio 1 with Peter Brown is a program uh, it's an entire programme actually with Cork Bard, Jimmy Crowley. That's 9pm RTE Radio 1 tomorrow night. Jimmy Crowley talks to Peter Brown, sings a few songs and talks about his life story. Now, Art Churahur Coltus Coltori Irn is with us and that's Senator, or I was going to say Senator Lauros of Monaco, but Lauros, things have changed since you were with us last. <laughs> There's no doubt about it and first of all I'm absolutely delighted that Kelly House is here with us. And, you know, going around and speaking to people, it's quite clear that they all came here knowing that it was going to be special. I remember when we first announced that the FLA was coming back to Ennis, we had it here in 56, we had it in 77, but when we announced it was coming back, there was a huge wave of emotion. It seemed to strike a chord, if you like, in the musical nation and throughout the world. And you can sense it here at the FLA since last Sunday. Certainly it's 39 years since the, the, the last FLA in Ennis, but we go back to 1956 to a very historic FLA, that was the first time the FLA was in Ennis. Yeah, yeah at that, I wasn't actually at the FLA, but a very interesting thing happened. I did attend an organising meeting and I met Mrs Crotty on that occasion and I met Malachi Sweeney who was down with his Cayley band playing, so I can, memory is going back that far, but we'll never forget the late Robert McMahon who penned the song The Flat Down in Ennis because it's more than a song, it's the social history of the flat itself with all the big names mentioned in it. But I have an inkling there'll be another song written about the flat 2016 as well, you know. There's no doubt about that, but I would say maybe looking at 56, Robbie was able to mention all those high profile musicians that were here. Those numbers have changed in the intervening period because nowadays so many people playing traditional music at such a high level. Huge crowds. Well, as you know, I was up at Kalosh de Wera the other day and I saw 897 young musicians together with 75 tutors playing the best of Irish music thanks to you and other people as well. It was absolutely fantastic. And the young people who are here, it's not just a standard of music, it's their whole department and the way they cooperate and their courtesy. It's very much a family festival. You have the grandparents, the parents, the children, and they're all really embracing the whole concept of the flower. Yeah, the atmosphere around the town is no doubt about it. Very, very welcoming. And as you say, very family friendly. Anybody that's thinking of coming to home, even tomorrow, should be great to you. There's no doubt about it. And of course, Sunday is always the big day. Monday, if you like, is a special day, but Sunday being the final day, I can just imagine the atmosphere that's going to be here. And of course also, you used to ask me a question previously, where will the FLA be next year? Well, we all know at this stage that the FLA will be back in Ennis, County Clare next year. <laughs> oh, that's an established fact. So I, maybe I should ask you who's going to win the All Ireland now? Yeah. Well, I do know that I have my own difficulties in trying to split myself. With not only hurling now, but you can include football in that as well. But I do know, like games and music and language and culture, they all form a pattern, and you get a sense of that here at the FLA as well. So happy, and the crowds are around the rain. It just doesn't affect people who follow traditional music. Oh gosh, not at all. I mean, I, I was just coming down through the crowd at the moment. The rain may dampen the streets, but there's one thing certain, it doesn't dampen the spirit of the hundreds and thousands of people out there. <laughs>
Now, Ross, before you go, a word for the volunteers. We always mention the Humarat Flas. They're very visible, but and, and at times they're not visible, but they're there doing the work. There's 1,500 volunteers, and you can walk around any part of Ennis, and you have the men and the women, and they're manning the entrances and the barricades. But what's important is they're pleasant, they're courteous. You couldn't run the flower without that. And I have to pay a tribute to Clare County Council. They have come behind it in a big way, I have to say that. And finally, I have to pay a tribute to RTE. They're doing a fantastic job in their coverage of the FLA as well. Laura Samoraku, we'll see you back in Ennis for the FLA down in Ennis next year, then 40 years after the one in 77. By the way, two volunteers that I happen to be with all week myself and two very, very special people that made Scully run as smoothly as it did was Joe Arkins, indeed, and Martin Green, two local men who gave up their time last week like nobody else. I have to say they did a fantastic job. That's Joe Arkins and Martin Breen. And we're looking around to the band. And maybe we'll go to Derek Hickey, actually. I see Derek. I saw three musicians. In fact, up to today, I saw two traditional musicians with baseball caps on them on stage. The third one has just emerged. Maybe it's a new trend in traditional music. We'll see the baseball cap arriving. Derek Hickey, I won't ask you to explain the, the baseball cap, but I, you can explain that you're actually in the recording studio at the moment. Yeah, um, myself and Liam Flanagan are in the in the process of recording an album, so that should be out in the next couple of months. How did yourself and Liam team up? Um, I suppose we just started gigging uh, locally around around home, you know, so maybe 12 or 15 years ago. Now you also told me actually that this is your first time getting involved in the Cayley Band, and I was wondering, was it a bit of drudgery? You're enjoying it? I'm loving it, loving it, yeah, it's fantastic. I'm involved with a fantastic bunch of people. And it's just a great experience. I'm really enjoying it. And looking forward to tomorrow night then? Big time. Big okay, yourself and Liam are going to play a selection of tunes for us. What are you going to play? A um, couple of jigs. Um, do you know what? The list, the set list blew off in the, in the, in the, in the breeze there a while ago, so I have no names. For... <laughs> so there are jigs with no names until we find that set list. There could be an O'Connell Street at this stage. It, it just blew off. I, I, I don't know where it's gone. Okay, see, so can you recognise these two jigs? Or if you find the set list up around maybe the Old Ground Hotel or somewhere, you can bring it back to us. But anyway, we're a couple of tunes from Derek Hickey on the accordion and Liam Flanagan on the tenor banjo. Take it away, lads.
with Derek Hickey on the accordion and Liam Flanagan on the tenor banjo. And as you know, what's the sign of a good band leader? Of course, Elvi, I should say, was also on piano. I didn't realise you were coming in there. But the sign of a good band leader is a man that will know the names of the tunes. And Dennis, you have the names of the tunes now, you can tell Derek. I buried my wife and danced on top of her. It's great fun for weddings. And the second one was down the back lane. Oh, in the back lane, so you have it now. Are you going to do another piece for this time? This is an unusual piece, actually. Yeah, it's a nice old tune that uh, we learned actually from Eamon's sister, Geraldine Cotter. It's uh, called Crush Dave and Coon, and it's in the Joyce Collection from 1909. Beautiful old piece of music. We look forward to hearing Crush Dave and Coon now from T. Nakula. Beautiful piece of music there from Chin Akula. Kush Tev and Cohen. And a reminder that you're listening to Cayley House live from the gig rig here in Ennis in County Clare. <laughs>
are still with this fair play and they have braved all kinds of weather. Some of the umbrellas are gone down, some of them are still there. You can take them down, old lads, we're grand. Now with me is a man from County Clare, actually, Eamon Meehan, CEO of Troker. Eamon, you're here on a mission at the FLA, certainly this weekend, but yourself, you're from just outside town. I am, I'm from Kilmaley, about six miles from Ennis. Uh, went to school here uh, in Kilmaley and in Flannans and I've lived overseas in Africa for a good few years and as you say I'm the director of Throkara and um, here basically to promote Thread for Throkara which is a project uh, that Throkara and Colthus have been running for the past six years. It started after the massive Haiti earthquake in 2010 when a group of musicians travelled from Dublin to Galway and holding gigs everywhere along the way and raised 15,000 euro for Throkara's work. So we spoke to Colthus and in the past six years there have been over 2,000 individual sessions uh, with musicians up and down the country and around the world and it has raised over 700,000 euro for Throkara's work. So that's a fantastic uh, achievement and uh, great credit due to, to Colthus and to all the trad musicians around the country. We've even held sessions in, in Africa. Um, so this year we're hoping that more and more people will join in, that people will either organise a session, that they will join up and, and play in a session, or indeed support the session. And uh, we're heading towards a million euro, and that's our target over the next couple of years. And I must say, it's fantastic to be associated with Colthus, with traditional music, and I think there's a great connection between Trokra and our community approach, and the community way that Colthus is, is built up as well. And there's no doubt, but every single cent, I suppose, counts. So no matter how small uh, a session is, people can just get together, organise a session and raise a few quid because every single euro counts in that effort. It does. Um, everything we raise is put to good use. I was in Ethiopia a few weeks ago and I was looking at some of the work uh, into which the, the money raised through Thread for Throkara has gone. Essentially what we're doing is supporting people there to produce more food to build up the, the soil, which has been degraded over many years, to manage water, to build dams, and to, to put in place very low technology irrigation systems. And from a situation where communities and farming families have been scraping by, they're now producing two or three crops every year, and they have plenty for food and plenty to sell. And that's the kind of work that we do, and that's the kind of work that your listeners and people here in Ennis this weekend uh, and thousands of musicians uh, around the country over the last six years have supported. Now, I know that there's a certain week that's dedicated to Trout for Trucker each year, but it's not confined to that week. But what are the dates and how can people find out more if they want to just start a session and raise a few quid? Yeah, the, uh, the main event takes place the week of the 26th of September this year. Um, people can find out about it on trucker.org forward slash trad but as you say uh, people can organize sessions any time of the year it doesn't have to be that week in September but that's I suppose the focus of, of our publicity and the promotion and I've no doubt that a lot of sessions will take place during that week so the message is take the message from here tonight organize a session trial for Trokra anything you want any help you want from Trokra it is available from Trokra it is available we're there to help we can provide you with all of the guidance and support all of the information that you need and uh, we can support you as well and uh, the staff of Trokra are happy to go along and to attend sessions throughout the country as well so before you go, a lot of people have been saying that they've been meeting on meeting me simultaneously on every street in the town of Venice. But I think it's imposters, people going around wearing masks. What's that about? Well, uh, that's part of the promotion of Trad for Trokra, and we have made these uh, cardboard masks. And uh, one of the faces that we've put on the cardboard mask is uh, this man here, Kieran Hanrahan. So that's why there's so many of you around the town, hundreds of you Karen, I'd say at this stage. Now you have an office of course here in town that explains some of your work. We have, we have a, a pop-up shop uh, this year on Harmony Row, uh, just it's inside part of the Rowan Tree Hostel, just there near the Club Bridge. So we'll be there from uh, 11 o'clock tomorrow morning and we'd be delighted to see you come along, get your photograph taken 
Um, you can take away some Throker materials as well, and you can take away uh, a mask of Kieran Hanrahan as well if you want one. Oh, well, I'd say there'll be a rush to there in the morning at 11 o'clock for sure. Eamon Meehan of Throker, thank you very, very much indeed. Thanks very much, Kieran. Eamon Meehan. Also, I see I'm in the audience. Thank you very much, Eamon. Fair play. So go around and check out the Troker office that's uh, over the next day because you have a chance to get there and see the work that's going on and find out maybe how you could help yourself. Now, there's a young gentleman here. I'm just going to go in beside him here. Don't know what happened there, lads, but I'm still here anyway. Microphone in hand. This is Edmar O'Connor. Give him a big welcome to Cayley House. Now, you live in Clapnowder, and I tell you that Edamar won the All Ireland. No, he's 13 years of age now, but he won the All Ireland under 15 fiddle today. He won the All Ireland under 15 banjo today. He won the All Ireland under 15 miscellaneous competition today. And he won the All Ireland under 15 melodian competition today. How about that? Edamar O'Connor, he's going to play a selection of tunes on the Melodian first. Edamar, what are you going to play? Uh, I don't know the name of the first one, and the second one is The Humours of Ballyconnell. He doesn't know the name of the first one, but the second one is called The Humours of Ballyconnell. Welcome, Edamar O'Connor. Edmar O'Connor on the Melodian there, I tell you. Bobby Gardner, are you listening to that? Brilliant playing from young Edmar O'Connor, and congratulations to him on his All Ireland title today. There's a man over here actually that won an All Ireland, an All Ireland title 12 months ago, and that's uh, George McAdam. And I'm not sure, George, are you going to defend your title this year? I am not, thankfully, Kieran, I'm not. Enough of all that done. Enough of all that, that's right. Now, where are you from yourself, by the way? I'm from Ballybee and County Mona. 
All Ireland champion on the tenor banjo, as I said last year, senior champion. We asked you to come along and play a tune tonight. You said you would, but you wanted to bring a young friend of yours with you. I do. I, I wanted to bring a wee Dun, a Dundalk musician, Perty Loud, with me. Um, he's actually a modern musician. He's based in Dundalk, Mono. And uh, his name is Bobby McCall, and he won the under 12 banjo. So we have. We have two reigning All Ireland champions because the senior banjo competition, you've another day of glory to kind of see out uh, George McAdam. And joining him is the under 12 All Ireland tenor banjo champion, Bobby McCall. Give them a welcome. Stuff. That's Bobby McCall there, supported by George McAdam on two tenor banjos, two All Ireland champions, one under 12, one senior. Isn't that fantastic? Brilliant playing from young Bobby McCall and, uh, well, not so young, maybe uh, George McAdam there. Now we have a young lady with us here now who's going to step out onto the stage because this is Elle Marie O'Dwyer. She's going to sing a song for us, but Elle Marie, you've kind of you've uh, you've started a, was it a new career here in County Clare? Um, I suppose you could call it that. Uh, so I was a primary school by teacher by day 
and I took a career break last year and I went down to UL to do the Masters in Irish Music. During my time there, the opportunity came up um, for a job in Clare County Council. Um, so Siobhan Mulcahy and the Arts Office in Clare County Council put together a job for a traditional singer in residence. So basically, hearing what that entails is um, promoting traditional singing among 13 to 17 year olds. We've kind of made it into um, all ages under 17 now because it's a, it's a bit discriminatory to make it 13 to 17 and the younger singers, they're really enthusiastic as well. So we decided that we try and motivate.